Thanks for joining me here at ButNowMinistry.org, and today we're going to look. We're going to take another look at more than one gospel. Okay, I posted seven. Um, I believe it's about seven um, teachings on more than one gospel in your Bible. This is another look at that. Okay, these are some of the other things that I did not touch on. Um, important truths that I want to teach you, and that I have learned. Um, in the course of my studies over the years. And we're going to start right with Galatians 2.7. Only in your King James Bible, okay? And you got to keep this in mind. If you're not a Bible believer, you're not going to get this, okay? You're, if you're using a corrupt translation, like an NASB or an ESV or an NLT or an RSV or... A New King James Version or the Message Bible. Um, again, I don't call any of those Bibles because they're not. Okay, they are not perfectly preserved. They have many errors. Most of those tell you that El Hanan killed Goliath, and we all know that David killed Goliath. Okay, that's just one error in that Bible. It's not those Bibles. Those translations are not perfectly preserved. Okay, uh, and that's just one example. I can probably give you 70 plus examples of all the mistakes in those translations but we're not going to go through that today but you need to find that out you need to study to show yourself approved unto God 2 Timothy 2.15 you need to compare the translations that is a study in itself I have done that study it took me over a year and a half to get through it um, comparing over a hundred translations to our King James authorized version, God's perfectly preserved word, and now I'm fully persuaded that it's not a debate, it's not King James onlyism, it is God's perfectly preserved word. And the people that present the debate, the people that say it's King James onlyism, are the people that have not studied. Why? Because they don't use a King James Bible. They wouldn't know how to study because it only says that in God's perfectly preserved word, the King James authorized version. Okay, that word study has been removed from all the other translations because it follows the Vatican text, the Sinaiticus Vaticanus, the Roman Catholic text. It does not follow the majority text. It does not follow the Antioch textual line. It follows the Alexandrian textual line. Okay, study that out. That is a great study. Some great books... I would recommend to you is the Cambridge History of the Bible, um, volumes one, two, and three. You can get them on um, Amazon. They're cheap. Um, great, great tools to have in your library. And um, Believing Bible Study by Ed, Edward F. Hills is another great book to have in your library. He's also um, also um, Fuller. <clears throat> has written some great great books too. David Otis Fuller. Um, a couple of his books, Which Bible, Counterfeit or Genuine, True or False. He's got three books out there that are outstanding on God's perfectly preserved word, King James Authorized Version. So, um, If you have not read those, I would encourage you to read those again. Study to show yourself approved unto God. That's what we are to do as the church, the body of Christ. So we go right to, uh, again, only in our King James Bible is there a distinction between Paul and Peter's gospel. Okay, Paul is given the gospel of the uncircumcision, and Peter is given the gospel of the circumcision. I believe in part one or part two of, of the first series, we go through those words of the and how important they are in God's perfectly preserved word. Okay, because they changed them to two, which is wrong, or four, which is what you'll find in your Jehovah Witness New World Translation. Okay, um, Galatians two seven says, but contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, which is Paul, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. Okay, the definition of contrary wise is, and we can go to the Old Testament under the law in the Bible for definition, okay? So we always go to our Bible for definition, okay? Um, the other day I was listening to a non denominational pastor preaching, and he went to the Greek for definition. It's unfortunate, okay, because the Greek 
is no different than the Hebrew. It's just copies and copies and copies. No different than our King James authorized version, which is a copy of the copies of the copies of the copies too, because there is no original text. But God said he perfectly preserved his word. Psalms chapter 12, right? And you need to find out which translation that is. I already found it out. Like I said, it's the King James authorized version. I do not go to the Greek for definition. I do not go to the Hebrew. I do not go to a scholar. I do not go to a commentary. I don't go to any pastor. I don't go to my priest. I don't go to um, the shell answer man for my definition. Okay, I go to God's Bible. God's perfectly preserved word has a built-in dictionary. Okay, and if you do not know that, you need to study that out because that is tremendous truth that I found out that I want to teach you. Okay, so we go to Old Testament doctrine about the word contrary wise, and this is what God said to Israel using that word, and this is how we get definition. Okay, Leviticus 26 21. And if you walk contrary unto me, and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. So, again, the opposite direction, right? Um, you're walking not the same as the Lord. You're contrary. That's right there is definition in Leviticus 26, 21. How about 23? And if you will not be reformed by me by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, differently, right? He... This per Israel does not want to walk contrary to the Lord. Uh, how about verse 24? Then will I also walk contrary unto you and will punish you yet seven times for your sins. And verse 27. And if you will not for all this hearken unto me, but walk contrary unto me, verse 28, then I will walk contrary unto you also in fury, and I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sin. So the Lord will walk contrary unto Israel if they walk contrary unto him. Different. Completely different. The Lord will do the opposite of what he was going to do. Contrary. Leviticus 26.40 If you shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespass against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me. Okay? They did not walk according to the Lord. They were contrary. That's what that word Galatians 2 7 means. The gospel of the uncircumcision was contrary to the gospel of circumcision. Now we can go to we can go to Webster's definition. Okay? Again, we went to God's word first. Okay? If we can't find God any definition in God's word, then we need to be careful where we find definition. If we go to the Greek and the Hebrew, we know those aren't perfect. They're all copies and copies and copies. If we go to Webster's, we have to be very careful of when we go to Webster's dictionary. We go to Webster's 1828 because that is before the corrupt translations. Okay, that is before um, all the different translations came out. So it's a little safer to go there. It's not perfect. It's not good. It's a perfectly preserved word. But we can get more of a biblical definition from that than we can if we were going to a dictionary from the 1950s. Okay? Webster's 1828 dictionary says contrary, against, opposite, adverse, moving against or in opposite direction as contrary winds. Just like it says in Leviticus 26, correct? Opposite, contrary, not merely different, but inconsistent or repugnant. Okay, so by God's definition and Webster's, the word clearly means the opposite. So they are two different Gospels. I mean, I don't even need to go any further. I'm already fully persuaded. God's Word fully persuaded me that they are two different Gospels. They are contradictory, they are opposite, they are different, and they are inconsistent. Okay, Acts 13.45 says, But when the Jews saw the multitudes... They were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul. Well, I wonder why. His message was contrary from that of Peter. And it says here, And spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming, right? 
wasn't Paul a blasphemer? He was teaching them things that went against the law of Moses. Which then, when you read in Acts 15, it makes sense why Paul and Peter were at odds, right? Acts 15, 1, And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. So you had to be circumcised, and you had to follow the manner of Moses, right? That's the gospel of the kingdom. Right? That was all under the law. And if they did not do that, if they did not believe in the Messiah, be circumcised and follow after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. Acts 15, 2, When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. Right? The question was, they have to be circumcised after the manner of Moses to be saved. Well, there was no small dissension and disputation. That means it was huge. That means there was a, a large dissension and disputation. Well, what does dissension and disputation mean? We're going to go to Webster's 1828 for definition on that. Dissension means to think. Disagreement in opinion, usually a disagreement which is violent, producing warm debates or angry words, contention in words, strife, discord, quarrel, breach of friendship and union. That's how big, it's no small dissension. It was huge. It was a huge disagreement in opinion. A disagreement which is violent, producing angry words, contention in words. That's because they had the same message. That is absolutely wrong. They did not have the same message. Paul's message went against the law of Moses. Went against circumcision. Peter's did not. Now let's take a look at the word disputation in Webster's 1820 Dictionary. The act of disputing a reasoning or argumentation in opposition to something or an opposite sides, controversy in words, verbal consent, respecting the truth of some fact, opinion, proposition, or argument. Again, opposition to something. Opposite sides. One was the uncircumcision, one gospel, and the other gospel is the circumcision. If they were both the same, why did God name them different? That's like saying you know, because most pastors will say all the Gospels are the same in the Bible. There's only one Gospel. Well, that's like saying all the utensils are the same. They're all utensils, but yet we have a knife, we have a spoon, we have a fork, and they all have different purposes, right? Different. The Gospel of the Uncircumcision is a completely different message than the Gospel of the Circumcision. One is under the law and one is under grace. One is according to Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery. One is according to Israel and its prophecy. One is according to the kingdom. One is according to the church, the body of Christ. Two different programs, two different purposes. Okay? All based on one cross, yes. All based on what the Lord Jesus Christ did, right? His cross brought in the New Testament, and his cross paid for our sin. Okay, so Acts 7, and in Acts 17, they were wondering what new doctrine Paul was teaching. So, again, the doctrine that Paul had was contrary to Peter's. It was a huge disputation and dissension about the doctrines. They went against circumcision and the manner of Moses. And this is what it says in Acts 17, 16. Now, while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Acts 17, 17. Therefore disputed he in the synagogues with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. Acts 17, 18. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him. And some said, What will this babbler say? Others some, he seemeth to be settler forth of strange gods. They thought Paul was from some strange god. They thought Paul was, he was out there. That's why the, the disputations and dissensions occurred. 
He seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods, because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. Acts 17, 19. And that is not what Peter preached. That is not what James preached. That is not what John preached. That is not what the Lord Jesus Christ preached. Acts 17, 19. And they took him and brought him into Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is. So Paul had this new doctrine. They thought he was following strange gods. He was preaching against the circumcision and the manner of Moses. It was contrary and there was a large disputation and dissension because of the grace message, Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery that was given to the Apostle Paul. Clearly they had two different Gospels. If they did not, why all the fuss, right? By the way, Paul's message was kept secret and Peter's wasn't, right? His was kept secret. That's why they thought he was following strange gods. That's why he had they were wondering what this new doctrine is because they had never heard it before. But they heard the gospel of the kingdom before. Why? Because Jesus preached it in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Peter preached it from Acts 1 to 8. But the gospel of the grace of God was not preached because the apostle Paul was not saved until Acts chapter 9. And then he was given the revelation of the mystery. A direct revelation from the Lord Jesus Christ, not after man. Galatians 1.11 confirms that. So those are some truths. Again, another look at more than one gospel of the Bible. And again, we're only looking at the two. The gospel of the uncircumcision and the gospel of the circumcision, which is also the gospel of the kingdom, is the gospel of the circumcision and the gospel of the uncircumcision is the gospel of the grace of God okay Paul took the gospel of the uncircumcision to unbelieving Israel uncircumcised Israel and to the Gentiles to the heathen okay Peter took the gospel of the circumcision to the circumcision Galatians 2 9 confirms that okay and by the way Galatians 2 9 is the commission that is in place today Okay, where there is no gospel of the kingdom now. They went their separate ways in Galatians 2.9. Paul and Barnabas took the gospel of the uncircumcision to unbelieving Israel and to the Gentiles. And the apostle Peter took the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of the circumcision, to the circumcision. Okay, again, the Great Commission has not happened yet. We're in the dispensation of the grace of God. And as the dispensation of the grace of God was coming in during the Acts period, okay, because that's when Galatians was written. It was Galatians, Galatians was written in Acts 15. That is why um, things were changing and so many things were going on in, in the book of Acts. Okay, and that's why when you read Paul's writings, so many things are going on in Paul's writings because he is going through a time um, he is writing in a time of transition from Israel's law program to the church, the body of Christ, grace program. The Acts book is a transitional book from that. And you need to keep that in mind. And another great study would be to study the book of Acts. And just keep this in mind. Peter always went to believing Israel. Okay, Peter's little flock was believing Israel. Paul went to everyone else that didn't believe in the book of Acts. He didn't go to Peter's little flock. They were already in, they were already believing, they were already going into the kingdom. They were um, getting ready to endure to the end and inherit the kingdom. Okay? But Paul went to everyone else. Okay? That's why his journeys are that much more than Peter's because Peter was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Matthew 10 5 confirms that. Peter, James, and John. Paul was sent everywhere else. He had a different message. Okay, they had already rejected Peter's message. So now Paul was was on his way with his message about Jesus and him being resurrected. 
Okay, you need to get that because that will help you tremendously when you're reading the book of Acts because there's so much going on. Okay, Paul went into the synagogues where they were unbelieving Israel. He didn't go to the ones that were already um, trusting in the gospel of the kingdom. Okay, so that will help tremendously when you're reading the book of Acts. <clears throat> so as we continue here, I left you with, by the way, Paul's message was kept secret, okay, and Peter's wasn't. And we know that in Romans 16.25 was kept secret, and in Acts 3.21 it was known, okay. And we're going to start off with that in the next message of another look at more than one gospel part two and again my hope is is that you are established in the truth that you are growing in grace and knowledge that you're understanding God's will for you and that would be to study to show yourself approved unto God and see souls saved and saints edified that's the will of God today okay and to be thankful that um, you are sealed until the day of redemption that Christ paid for all your sin he's not counting one trespass against you 2 Corinthians 5 16 through 21 and you're completing him Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 and 10 So thanks again for listening. Email me at reckonyourselfdead at gmail.com. Um, subscribe to my channel if you're liking what you're hearing. Um, put up a like. Let other people know so that they can hear the gospel, the grace of God, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And you can see their soul saved. And you'll see them in heaven too, in heavenly places where we're sitting right now with the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks again for listening.